Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, before I go on to block diagrams, I very briefly, three minutes or so, I want to talk about uh, time shifted functions, Laplace transform of time shifted functions. Okay. I see there is a lot of struggle here. I have uploaded a document that talks about it. We've done this in class before, and uh, here is a very quick way of dealing with these things. Two things, not going to derive anything. Laplace of a time shifted function. Please, thank you. Laplace of a time shifted function, u of t minus t naught says that this function is starting after time t is equal to t naught, at time t is equal to t naught, and so on. So this is nothing but e to the power minus s t naught multiplied by Laplace of the actual function itself. Okay. So this is one formula. This was posted on Karman. The second thing is if I have an exponential term attached to these shifted time functions, here is how we deal with it. e to the power minus a t minus t naught f of t minus t naught u of t minus t naught here too you get the first term e to the power minus s t naught And this was actually derived uh, during lecture 19, lecture 20. Okay. The same story goes here. There is nothing different. It is just that there is an extra e to the power minus something added there. And so this is just Laplace of e to the power minus at f of t. Okay. So I have a frequency shift e to the power minus at, which means all the terms containing s in the Laplace of f of t will get shifted by that quantity a. I also have a time shift by t naught. A quick example, Laplace cosine omega times t minus t naught u of t minus t naught. Okay, so here omega is the frequency. No phase shift on this wave. Okay, so how do we calculate the Laplace transform of this you see u of t minus t naught. So this is of the same form as the first result that has been written here. And so all you're going to do is say this is equal to minus s t naught, which takes care of the time shift. And then Laplace of cosine omega t, which we have the Laplace tables posted on Karman. This is e to the power <coughs> minus s t naught s by s square plus omega square. Let's take an example where there is an e to the power minus something. I attach it onto the same function that I took a Laplace of. Laplace e to the power minus a t minus t naught cosine omega times t minus t naught u of t minus t naught. Previous case I used result 1. This case I'm going to use result 2. It is as simple as that. There is nothing to think about here. This is a mathematical operation. The thinking part is done when you're actually setting up the problem. You're getting the equations of motion. That is the thinking part. This is just the solving it. Okay. So if I have this situation, what do I do? I see there is first of all a time shift to account for. So that's e to the power minus s t naught. And then Laplace of whatever else is left. Okay? This is Laplace e to the power minus a t cosine of omega t. So which means that now I have a time shift which is taken care of. I have a frequency shift which means that all the terms containing s will be shifted by that value of a. Okay, so this ends up being e to the power minus s t naught s plus a 
S plus A square omega square. And the document to this effect has been uploaded on Carmen. There are lots of things uploaded on Carmen. Please do take some time to go through some of these things, at least glance through them to see what the purported utility of these things are. Okay? Thank you. Any questions so far? Does this make sense to everybody? All I'm doing is taking this, applying this. Taking this, applying that. No thinking. Thinking has been done. Okay. We were on block diagrams, a uh, very nice, interesting, and uh, very useful part of uh, this course, block diagrams. Block diagrams, they provide a visual representation of the dynamic model. Okay, the visual. representation of the system model when people say system model there are two types the physical model that is not what we are representing in the block diagram we are representing a mathematical model okay which is the ODE of the system or maybe the system transfer function and we briefly started this particular journey I'm going to complete it today uh, there are fundamental parts of the block diagram. This is all done in the Laplace domain. Okay. okay. And then the fundamental parts of the block diagram, we looked at some of these signals. You could have input signal, you could have several input signals, you could have a multiple set of inputs to the system. The beauty of linear systems is I can use superposition to solve for multiple inputs and then I have a system output, a single system output typically for system dynamics we are concerned only with that. So input signals and then an output signal typically represented by an arrow which depicts the flow of the signal. X of S, or typically this is also written on top of the arrow. Okay, so something like this, F of S, etc. F of S could be a force, it could be a response variable, we don't know. Right now it is just a signal. <coughs> and what's a signal? Any information carrying wave is a signal. Okay? Then we looked at the summer block. This is as you as the name indicates, right, this is just to add or subtract signals. Okay, so add, subtract signals, typically represented by a circle. And uh, if you look at MATLAB, and you're going to be introduced to this uh, during recitations, where right, they're going to teach you Simulink, we will not use it extensively this semester, but Simulink is an important part of your next sequence, system integration and controls. Okay? So you might use it there. So a summer block looks like this. Let's say I have two signals entering this block. Sometimes the signs are written inside or outside, depends on the book. Your book uses it outside, so let me also use it outside. Let's call the first signal as G of S. This is F of S. The output signal always leaves the summer and the output is nothing but the sum of the two inputs with respect to the signs, the algebraic signs that are positioned next to them. So this is just G of S minus F of S. Simple, elegant. Third one, block. Okay, there are several types of blocks. There is a gain block, there is an integrator block. There's also a differentiator block if you're feeling brave. Uh, we will not use that. I'll tell you why. 
but I consider a general block. Okay, this block has certain contents. The contents could be a constant, the contents could be something in the Laplace domain, a transfer function for all that I care about of the system. There is a certain input signal coming to that block. Okay, so this is the input signal. Just drawing a circle, no need to. Okay, then I have the output signal coming out of the block. And this essentially behaves like a transfer function. That transfer function could be the transfer function of the entire system, which we have seen in previous lectures. Or it could just be a small constant, which is the transfer function local to a certain component. OK? So there could be multiple types of transfer functions. You will see the difference between the two. So the basic idea is output divided by input is equal to the contents. This is a block. Okay, this is the purpose of a block. Or I can say that the output is the contents multiplied by the input. That's also another way of saying it. Output is input times. Time. People in the back, can you see my writing? Do you have to strain too hard? If you have to strain too hard, please let me know. I can already increase the size of this, OK? And I will try to do that in the next panel. OK, so look at the basic types of blocks. There's a gain block. Essentially, I have a constant value within the block, so some constant g. Okay, this is a constant value. I have a certain input signal, let's say f of s, something like that. Some output signal h of s, g is a constant. What's the relationship between h of s and f of s? Really trivial, right? h of s divided by f of s is equal to the value g. Okay? So what this gain block is telling you is, okay, hey, here is a signal f of s. I'm taking that fellow and I'm multiplying that by something. How much is the gain that I get at the end? That gain could be a minimization, an attenuation, or an amplification of the original signal. You see, if this is a non-fractional number, if it's an integer, right, then I could get a magnification of the input signal. If it is a fraction, I could get an attenuation of the input signal. Attenuation means reduction in magnitude, okay? So here I have h of s, y g of s is equal to g, which is the gain of the block, or h of s is some So always remember something like this. Output is whatever is the content of the block multiplied by the input signal. Okay? I guess h of s, right? Uh, I miswrote myself here. So this is f of s. No, this is also f of s. I did not want to use g because the gain g was written as g. So. All right. Next one is the integrated block. Let's take the following equation. Okay, so let me do it here. So y is x dot. This is in the time domain, right? When you see a dot or something, they are all in the time domain. I take Laplace on both sides. What should I get on the right hand side and the left hand side? Left hand side should be capital Y of S. So take the Laplace transform. Y of S is equal to when you're doing the block diagram, your initial conditions are switched off. So the left hand, right hand side is s times x of s. <coughs> Let's
Let's consider the following. I integrated on both sides with respect to time, obviously. Right? So I have <coughs> integral y dt is integral dx by dt of dt. So this is just x of t. Does this make sense so far? Just basic integration, right? I take this side. I just rearrange the contents. And I say, OK, x of s is equal to this is integration. What do you see? Yes. One over s, you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, it's just that one over s is not really Exactly. Fantastic. That's all it is. Right? So, if I take the Laplace transform of this guy, I get 1 over s, y of s, is equal to x of s. Which means that the Laplace transform of an integral quantity in the absence of any initial conditions is the following. This is a silly proof. This is not the actual proof. I have posted the actual proof in my lecture notes. Okay? So, Laplace of integral y dt is 1 over s y of s for system having no initial condition. I'm interested only in the steady state response. So this 1 over s creature is an integrator. And likewise, its compatriot s is the differentiator. Likewise. Similarly, differentiation is bad, integration is good from a societal point of view as well as from a mathematical point of view, right? Because if you look at differentiation, if you have a very noisy signal, differentiation worsens the noise, numerical differentiation. Okay, which is what MATLAB does. MATLAB does not do symbolic differentiation. It does if you have the symbolic toolbox, but that's for a very limited set of things. So you take any numerical software, the differentiation or integration is done numerically. If you take a noisy signal and you differentiate it, the output is even more noisier. If you take a signal and integrate it, integration is essentially a process of averaging things out, which means that things get smoother. But there is a something called as a drift that is introduced. We will not go there. Integration is good. Differentiation is bad. Okay. So in block diagrams, we typically do not like to include this creature. We like to include the integrator block. Okay. So the integrator block is written as follows. 1 over s. This is in a Laplace domain. I have a signal f of s. I get a signal, x of s is the output. What's the relationship between the two? x of s is the integral of f of s in the Laplace domain. Okay, or x of s by f of s is 1 over s. Or equivalently, I can say the following. f of s is s times x of s, right? I'm just cross multiplying. f of s is the differentiation of x of s in the Laplace domain. And so this same block diagram can be rewritten as follows. 1 by s, x of s. And instead of writing f of s, I'm going to write s times x of s. I want to take a pause here. I want to see if this is clear to everybody. <coughs> okay, so here is what we did. We decided that the process of having a 1 over s in the Laplace domain implies integration. Integration is better than differentiation because integration on the whole averages out 
the noise in data, so it smoothens out things to a certain extent, okay, numerically. And so I have this integrator block. By definition, the output is the contents of the block multiplied by the input, which is what I've written here. Or conversely, if I cross multiply, f of s is take the s and bring it down here, that's s times x of s. Which means the same block diagram that I have shown here. This is a block diagram. This could be a part of a larger block diagram, but this is still a block diagram. I have a block. I have a diagram. It's a block diagram. The same block diagram can be drawn in a different way, which is this creature here. Rather than say f of s, I would just say s times x of s. Makes complete sense because if I look at the output, is the Contents multiplied by x of s. So x of s is equal to x of s, qed, and all those nice things. So these are all identical, which tells you a very dangerous truth. There is no one best way to draw block diagrams. There are some good ways. The methods that I tell you are good. But there is no one best way to draw block diagrams because I can always draw them in multiple ways. I can always label them in multiple different situations. Okay. So there's one more thing um, before I start solving some problems. I want to see if there are any questions. I'm going to pull the top panel down. Okay. Halloween and this is scary stuff. I had planned the joke. Okay, the last one is called as a takeoff point or a pickoff point. It's simple too, as you see. Let's say I have a signal moving along its own sweet path, x of s. Okay. Sometimes I have to take this signal and reroute it to a different part of the block diagram, and that's done by a takeoff point. Okay, so I put a small dot, and I say, okay, hey, take this signal, send it to a different part. But you've got to understand, when I do so, I am in no way reducing the magnitude of the signal that is proceeding along in this direction. This is not fluid dynamics. I am not taking a portion of the fluid flow and then redirecting it somewhere so that there is conservation of mass everywhere and so on. That's not what I'm doing. This is a trick. All I'm doing is, I'm taking something that's going along its journey. <laughs> and saying, okay, hey, I need your help here as well, but you keep proceeding along your journey that side too. There is no attenuation or magnification of that signal. You're just taking a signal and rerouting it to somewhere else. I can do this multiple times without any loss of that signal. I can do it multiple times without any loss of the original signal. All of these points that you see, they're the takeoff points. Now we are ready for a problem. Maybe I should write this here so no modification in the magnitude of the rerouted same.
and once again, why are we doing these things? Is first of all, this is a nice representation of the system. Okay, the dynamic model of the system. This feeds into using these ideas in software packages like MATLAB and other uh, control systems packages. There's something called DSpace. That's another thing that you might come across later on. And it also helps us understand how the different components of a system interact with each other. How is the signal going into the damping element? How is the signal coming out at the summing junction and then doing something else? Okay? So the interaction is much more uh, vivid here in, in terms of the pictorial representation. All right. So here is a problem. So draw block diagram for the following equation. So this is 3x double dot plus 6x dot plus 8x. Right, second order ordinary differential equation. Two inputs, 4f of t plus 3g of t. I always believe in taking steps towards the final answer, an incremental approach. So let's start with some basic steps. This is what you follow when you want to draw a block diagram. Okay? And after you've done enough problems, this becomes second nature. First step, take all the terms except for the highest derivative term and throw them onto the right hand side. Okay, so I have 3x double dot is the highest derivative term on the left hand side. Throw all the other terms onto the right hand side. So this is going to be 4f of t, 3g of t, 6x dot, 8x. This is contrary to how we have been writing things. Why am I doing this? Just to have some ease when I am drawing the block diagram. Okay, this is just for convenience. Take the Laplace transform. Switch off the initial conditions. Okay? When you're drawing block diagrams, there are no initial conditions. Your final figure is going to be in the Laplace domain. Okay? So 3s square x of s. Right? The Laplace transform of x double dot is s square times capital X of s. And then I have the Laplace of the other creatures. 4 times f of s. 3 times g of s. 6 x dot 6s x of s minus 8 capital X of s. Switch off initial conditions. Third step. Write the equal to sign. Put a large bracket. 4 times f of s has a positive value, so I write it as plus 4 f of s. Then plus 3 g of s. I'm not doing anything new, just writing what I'm seeing. Minus 6 s x of s minus 8 x of s. And then, here is what I do. S square, I bring it to the right hand side, which becomes a 1 by S square. I write the 1 by S square as 1 by S times 1 by S. Okay, so I have a 1 by S. 1 by S. Then I have the 3 on the left hand side, bring it down as a denominator on the right hand side. And that becomes a 1 by 3. So this is now my x of s. Close the brackets on the other side as well. Does this make sense to everybody? I'm going to erase this panel here. Once again, these are the basic steps that one follows. This is not physics based. It is just ease of use. Okay.
And you don't need to write down all of these things in your actual answer, but I do it for our convenience here. So here is what I see. Okay. I see that the output signal is x of s. Right? So the output x of s. I see there are two input signals, f of s and g of s. How many constants do I see? How many constants do I see in this final expression here? I see 1 by 3. 1 by 3 is one constant. Then I see 4. That's another constant. 3 is another constant. 6 is another constant. 8 is another constant. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 constants. I see 5 constants. What are they? 1 by 3, 4, 3, 6, and 8. Does this make sense to everybody? If you see constants, it means that they're going to go inside a gain block, which means that in this particular figure, I need five gain blocks. Each of them having this magnitude, OK? Then I come and take a look at this big expression here. I see 1 by s and I see 1 by s, which means I need to have two integrators. Okay? So two integrators. Because of the 1 by s and 1 by s. What else do I need to complete the figure? What else do I need to complete the figure? Yes. Uh, I need a summer block. What are the signs that go in the summer block? Plus, <coughs> plus, minus, minus. Okay. So I need a summer block. Some plus, plus, minus, and minus. Okay. These are the signs that you will put inside the summer block. You can put them either inside or outside. I don't have a preference. I'm going to put them inside. Okay. And then just we draw and go on to the next problem. How to draw. I start from the right and I walk my way towards the left. When I'm drawing the block diagram, I look at the large equation, start within the brackets, the innermost brackets, walk your way towards the final totality. Okay, I start with the output signal. Always draw that somewhere. This is the output I need. Okay. Then I see that I have an 8 times x of s. So I put a pick off point, take this creature. put it inside a gain block. So this signal is still x of s. What's the output I'm going to get? 8 times x of s. Does this make sense so far? Then I see that the next signal that I need is s times x of s multiplied by another gain. And so I place an integrator before the x of s. Which means the signal that was input into the integrator has to be s times x of s. And then I put a pick off point on the s times x of s. Take it. Place it through the gain block which was 6. S, X of S. This is 6 times S times X of S. Does this make sense so far to everybody? Okay, I start off with the output signal. This may be boring to some of you and I don't really care. X of S. I put a pick off point there. 
I take it and I put it down inside the first gain block because it's 8 times x of s. So I put an 8 here and I get an output of 8 times x of s. Okay? Then I see what's the next culprit here. The culprit is 6 times s times x of s. So I put an integrator right in front of x of s. Which means this guy had to be s times x of s. If I multiplied that, I would be getting x of s. Put a pick off, pass it through a gain block. You get the output here. I have two of the uh, in things that I need, 6 times s, x of s, 8 times x, x of s, 4 f of s, 3 g of s, I do the following. So, put a summer, okay? Then you say, okay, this guy goes here at the negative terminal of the summer. This guy goes here at the negative terminal of the summer. I have to pass four times f of s, so I take the input signal f of s, multiply by gain, and then pass that creature. Okay? So here is four, and this is f of s. Can everybody see my writing on here, on the ends here? People on this side as well. Okay, sorry about that. So this is f of s, and then and push this down, but I have a 3, a g of s, this is a plus, this is a plus. Take all of these creatures, they will get added up, pass them into one more integrator. And that's it. This is your block diagram. I have two integrators. Fantastic. Then I have six or five gain blocks, as I have specified up there. I have one summer. I have two inputs, f of s and g of s. And uh, I must have forgotten to divide through by the factor of 1 by 3. So here is what one can do. You can add this 1 by 3, so here is what I am saying, you can do this multiple ways. The 1 by 3 comes from that last gain there. I can either place it here or I can place it here. Okay? Makes no difference to the problem. The problem remains the same. The block diagram is equally right. Multiple ways to draw these things. Any questions so far? Before I go to the next one. Yes. What's the advantage of the block diagram? Well, now I can visually understand how different parts of the system are, un uh, are taking, uh, interacting with each other. For example, I could change the value of this guy. This could be the stiffness of the problem. The input to the problem could be a step input. That way, the output will directly reflect what the effect of the change of this parameter is. Okay, and this is something you would feed into MATLAB. You know, it's mostly to understand it from the point of view of numerical software. So you put this into MATLAB. You give it a value of 8 and you run the program. Gives you an output. You change the value to 4, what happens? Your peak overshoot might reduce or you might have a longer settling time and so on and so forth. Change this guy, changes the damping constant. I could start from an under damp system, I could go to an over damp system. All of this can be done automatically. I don't need to keep thinking about it again and again. Okay? All right. So that's one thing. You also have the inverse process that is given a block diagram, how do I get the equation of the system? which is more interesting in my opinion. Let's do that. And uh, you'll have more examples during recitation, so please, please do try to go to recitations, if you can. Here is another problem. I have the following block diagram. F of S is an input signal enters the summer. Okay, passes through. I guess uh, this was the problem I had. A gain block of magnitude 3 passes through two integrator blocks. One. Uh, 1 by s, 
and then another one, one by S, okay, and then I have the output signal coming out, it is X of S, okay. Block diagram is not complete, I have a couple more things, pick off. Pick off of the signal X of S passes through a gain block of magnitude 4, then goes all the way here. I have another takeoff or pick off point, okay? Take off from here. Passes through not an integrator but a frequency shifted integrator 1 by s plus 1. Okay, people in the back, this is 1 by s plus 1, not 1 by s. Okay, then this also goes here. This is a plus, a minus, and a minus. And uh, that's about it. Obtain the system model. With your permission, I'm going to erase this panel here. Okay. Just a recap: f of s input signal, x of s output signal. The typical convention is that the input is at the left, the output is at the right. Okay, this is a typical convention, not because of any speciality. I have two integrator blocks, one by s, one by s. Then I have this uh, frequency shifted integrator sitting right there. Gain block of four goes through a summer, all of them multiplied by a factor of 3, obtain the system model. Here's how you work your way through it. I'm going to erase this. And this is really fun. It's like solving a crossword puzzle, okay, if you do like such things. I start labeling them by some numbers or alphabets. Numbers are better because there are more numbers than alphabets. I call this as 1, okay? Then I call this as 2. I call this as 3. Nothing sacred about what you call 2 versus 3. And then out of the block 1 by S plus 1, I call the signal coming out as signal 4. This is signal 5. I'm just labeling stuff. I'm not doing anything. All of this goes in. And I have signal 6. Then I have 7 right after the gain block. And then I have 8 and then I have 9. This is 8. And this is 9. And common sense tells us that 9 and 1 are the same. Okay? Does this make sense to everybody? This labeling numbers. Okay? So start with one. One is identical to nine, and what's the signal at one? It's x of s. Okay? So this is step one. Then go to step two. What's the signal at two? The signal at 2 is also x of s because it's a pick-off or a take-off point coming into that block. So 2 is also x of s. What's the signal at 3? Same thing. What's the signal at 4? That's the output, which is the input multiplied by the contents. Okay? So at Four, which is right here. This is nothing but whatever is the contents multiplied by the signal at two. So this is one by s plus one times two, which is x of s by s plus one. Same story at five. I'm sorry, number five. Thank you. 
So at 5, I have 3 coming as input signal, passes through a gain of 4, and the output becomes 4 times 3. Okay? So then I have 5 is 3 multiplied by 4, which is 4 times x of s, because 3 is the same as x of s. Am I making sense to everybody? I just want to make sure everything is clear. I'm just labeling things and saying, OK, what is the output signal here? What is the input signal here? What's the combination of the two? Magnified or attenuated. At 6, things come to a headlong crash. Some of them get added, some of them get subtracted. So at 6, I'm going to have f of s added minus 4 minus 5. Or the output signal coming out of the summer is f of s minus x of s by s plus 1 minus 4 times x of s. What's going to happen at 7? Yes, question. Um, so why would you write those as negative inputs instead of just outputs? Say that again, please. So if you're 4 and you're 5, you uh -huh. have as inputs that are negative. Uh -huh. Would that be the same as like an output? No, no. This is So arrow going into it is an input. Arrow coming out is an output. The output is going to be the sum of all of these inputs. So this is coming to a positive terminal here. Okay. This signal was coming to a negative terminal, so it picks up a negative sign. And this comes to a negative terminal, as well picks up a negative sign. So at 6, I'm going to have the algebraic sum of all of these things, which is f of s, positive, plus minus 4, plus minus 5. Does this make sense? OK, think about it. We will talk about it again after class. And we will solve one more problem on Wednesday, a slightly more complicated one. So at 7, I have all of the stuff coming into 6 multiplied by 3. So I'm going to have, this is 3 times f of s, x of s by s plus 1. That, running out of space, I'm going to sneak in 8. What's going to happen at 8? I'm going to have everything multiplied by 1 by s. OK? So all of the stuff coming out from 7 is multiplied by 1 by s. So I'm going to have a 3 by s, f of s, x of s by s plus 1, 4 x of s. I'm going to write step 9 here, OK? But here is what I'm going to do. What's 9? Is x of s. So instead of writing 9, I'm going to write it as x of s, OK? So x of s then, 1 by s times the signal coming out from 8. And so I'm going to have a 3 by s square, because I already had a 3 by s coming out of 8 multiplied by 1 by s. This is just going to be f of s 